Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 878. I'm Kristen Omdahl, and we're here live in Southwest Florida at the beach. I'm covering up this beautiful wood there. That's better. <laughs> if you're joining me live, please say hello. If you are crafting this morning, please share it with all of us. And if you have questions for me, please ask. If I can answer them, I will. But if you're joining me live, I'd love to hear from you. Please say hello. <clears throat> hi, Lucy. Hi, Joe. Hi, Diamond Girl. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Judy and Donna and Christine. Jackie, good morning. Good morning, Grace, Suzanne, Thea. Good morning. What day is it? Is it Tuesday? Happy Tuesday. Hi, Lisa and Thea, Judy, Marsha. Shelly, Dave, Mariana. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. I'm Kristen Omdahl. This is episode 878, and we're here live in Southwest Florida. Hi, Sharon, Rita, sweet Melissa. <clears throat> this is the beautiful Gulf of Mexico behind me. Hope everybody's having a great day so far. Uh, the, the sand is smooth, uh, could be from tide, could be from rain, but yeah, the sand is very smooth where I'm at. It's very wet also, so probably tide's going out, possibly. The water is quite smooth today also. Hi, Judy and Geraldine. good morning. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I heard people yelling, I wasn't sure what that was about. Oh, thanks, Mickey. Yeah, I sign every I sign every packing slip with a personal note. Always have. Uh, hi, Brenda. Yes, this is a gorgeous spot. Very special spot here. Hi, Nora. Yes, Carrie. The water is very calm today. What a nice, beautiful scene this morning. Hi, A hi, Anna and Carrie. Good morning. Thanks, Mickey. You know what's interesting to me is that. Uh, uh, when I sign the packing slips every day, it's my opportunity to make an effort to uh, focus on gratitude. So as I write thank you and personalize each, uh, well, what I do, for those of you that have never ordered from me, I write thank you and the person's name of, let's say, uh, Mickey. <laughs> she, she made the comment. So on Mickey's packing slip, I wrote, thank you, Mickey, exclamation point. Then I write a heart, comma, and then I, I sign with my signature or my autograph. And um, I've, I've always done it on packing slips from day one. And for me, it's an opportunity to focus on my gratitude. So to write a heartfelt and personal thank you to every person who places an order for me is very special to me because it's those orders that put food on my table and keep a roof over my head and help me support my son. Um, and it's just, it's, it's an opportunity, opportunity for me to focus on gratitude and at the same time, it makes other people feel special too. So it really is like this I don't know, it's double special because it does something for me and it does something for other people. Isn't that cool? Like, I did it for me in a way. Uh, I do it for me in a way, but it also touches other people and I just think that that's really cool. <laughs> uh, hi, that Yarny Zebra. Good morning. Hi, Natalie. Good morning. Thank you, Mickey. I appreciate it. I think someone mentioned that my hair is done today. You know what? I was I, I was so tired when I got up this morning, and you can tell I'm, I, I wasn't going to show you, but can you see how puffy the bags are under my eyes this morning? Maybe my makeup covered them. I woke up this morning. I'm like, who is that? Uh, who is that with those baggy eyes? Um, so I woke up. My eyes were so puffy. I didn't even really want to open them at first. They felt so puffy. This so is definitely come down, but I just. You never wake up and you're like more tired than you should be. Like I went to bed maybe a little bit late last night, but I slept straight through, slept great, and I woke up extremely tired. Now I know I've worked physically 
uh, more than normal in the last couple of weeks and I know that that will eventually <laughs> catch up to me so maybe it's catching up to me now uh, but yeah I, I, um, I considered canceling the podcast because I had such a hard time pulling myself together have you ever felt like that in the morning like I don't know if I can do my hair and makeup I don't know if I can drive to the beach like I was really tired and that's that's not necessarily a regular for me and so I said you know what leave your hair wet don't do your hair do partial makeup you're gonna wear glasses anyway <laughs> just keep moving and so I said I'm gonna I'm working on I need to make an afghan for a uh, housewarming gift right now and the person that I'm making it for is in love with chocolate variegated yarn in be so easy yarn so i'm going to make her a uh, housewarming gift yeah making her an afghan in this yarn and uh i was like i know i'll start that at the beach this morning so i grabbed all my stuff i thought i grabbed everything i went back in the house twice to keep grabbing stuff because i kept forgetting stuff and guess what i forgot and didn't realize till i got here i'm gonna wait if i was gonna start an afghan this morning and i brought the yarn what do you think I would eye roll at myself for? What could I possibly have forgotten? Thea, you got it. Thea's the first one that guessed right. I forgot my hook. <laughs> so I'm down here with yarn and no hook. <laughs> yes, I, I know. I knew everybody would know exactly what I meant. Yes, I forgot my hook. And does anybody remember when they used to call it something different back in the day and... Well, not back in the day. Like when I first started crocheting, there was a technique for making afghans called mile a minute afghans where you would make strips and either join them together or, or sew them together or whatever. And then there was Bruges lace. Uh, and I thought that I'm gonna combine mile a minute with Bruges lace to make strips that are joined as you go to make the afghan. So I'm gonna do it lengthwise. So what, I'm thinking that to make an afghan big enough for two people to cuddle on the couch, I'm guessing I need to do at least a 40 by 60, wouldn't you say? I think 40 by 40 inches by 60 inches might be a pretty nice size for uh, a two person cuddle afghan. At least I brought something to drink. Yeah, I think it'll be a nice size for a two-person cuddle afghan. And it'll still not be too big that it could still drape over the couch uh, when they're not in when it's not in use. So I'm what I'm going, yes, Nora, this is this dress is definitely in my Amazon shop. It's one of my favorite styles of dresses from my Amazon shop too. It's a very simple tank top dress with a seamed waist that gives you a little more of um, a nipped in waist and it's a little bit high for a waist so i'm it's not quite empire waist but here's my natural waist and here's where the waistband is so it's a little bit of a high waist uh which is very flattering on most people especially if you have a little bit of a belly like me um it is a nice spot and then it's fit and flare to the bottom and as you can see on me it ends up being just above the knee they are super easy for washing and drying absolutely no ironing necessary this one's quite old too i've had this one for several years uh, and as you can see it's still something that i like to wear all the time i love the print on this one it's a navy background with pink and turquoise flowers and a little bit of green leaves um, what was I gonna say this is a size large uh, I it was the right size for me when I first bought it I'm five foot nine and a hundred and oh almost 90 pounds right now and so for me at this weight probably could use an extra large and hopefully I make it back down into this size so it's a little tighter than I think that I would have intended it for when I first bought it I like the way it fit better not that I think it fits badly right now but I'm probably if you're looking to buy right now and you're my size I would say consider between a large and an extra large when I'm in the 180s 
I like a large. When I'm in the 170s, I like a medium. <laughs> and now that I'm 190, I'm thinking extra large might be better for that size. But still, it's a stretchy stretchy t-shirt kind of fabric and um, very forgiving. But I like giving you these kind of ranges to give you an idea if you're unsure of what to buy. Because I know some not everybody is comfortable shopping for clothing online. I actually love shopping for clothing online because I think I've gotten pretty good at it over the years. Really, really helpful to read reviews and figure out what sizes people buy based on their bust and their measurements or their weight. Uh, so five foot nine, 38 double D, uh, I'm between a large and an extra large at 190 pounds. So I think that's helpful. Um, yeah, mile a minute's really fun, Rita, I agree. It's a fun way to feel that instant gratification because you, because you're doing shorter strip or narrow strips, you feel like you're getting more done. Sometimes it's just the optical illusion of thinking you're getting more done, right? It's kind of like the difference between doing a top-down rectangular or top-down triangular shawl or a bottom-up triangular shawl. Both have those optical illusions of feel like feeling like you're getting a lot done at different times, and it's at different times on both. So when you're doing a top-down triangular shawl where you're doing the increases, you start little and you grow larger. And so in the beginning, you get that optical illusion of feeling like you're getting a lot done. But then the rows at the end feel like the never ending rows. Whereas when you do a bottom up, so from a triangle, you do bottom up to the top where you start big and then decrease up to the top center. Um, the optical illusion there is that the first few rows are never ending, but as you continue to decrease, those last rows are lightning fast. So depends on when you want that uh, <laughs> gratification, right? Because both have it, uh, they just have it at different times in the project. I'm in the middle of making a sample in a top-down increasing triangular shawl, and that's one of the reasons I stayed up too late last night. I was so close to the end of a certain section, and I just kept pushing through going, one more row, one more row, and then I looked up, and I needed to get to 197 stitches, and at the end of my last row, I had 199 stitches, or no. I had to, well, it all increases by four. Anyway, I was tired. I'm gonna have to take a look at all that today and hopefully not unravel anything or adjust the numbers somehow because I think I went over by two rows. I was pushing myself to finish and ended up finishing too much. What was I watching? I must have been watching something good to get that distracted. I know it wasn't manifest because I gave up on that show. I love season one and season two I thought got really cheesy. What's everybody else watching right now? I have a bunch of um, knitting and crochet work to do where I could really use a, a sitting on the couch working kind of day. What kind of, what shows is everybody else liking right now? I did not make that more even, did I? Did that help? No, it made it worse. <laughs> there. <laughs> Lupin. I haven't heard, I think, is that on Netflix? I feel like I've seen the title. Sweet Melissa gave up on Manifest 2. It got laughably cheesy at the end, right, Sweet Melissa? Like, I was like, I thought it just got too much. Handmade Tale. I think that's on Hulu. I don't pay for Hulu. I have Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Xfinity. Goliath? I haven't heard of that one. I haven't heard of Boss. I don't have Hulu, so I can't watch that one. Unforgotten? I haven't watched that. I haven't watched Bosch. I haven't watched Poldark. Virgin River, I watched a couple episodes of that. It did not uh, stick with it. I don't remember why. I haven't watched Sweet Tooth. Thanks for the suggestions, everybody. Oh, I was watching a movie last night. I was watching a movie on Netflix with that supermodel, Emily... Radikowski, I think her name is. She's in a movie about art theft. I started watching that last night. It was kind of fun. It was called Lying and Stealing, I think. I would love to find a new espionage or uh, next in fashion. That sounds good. I've heard there's a new season of Making the Cut on Amazon Prime TV. 
Now, I listen to a lot of music too, Nikki. I do. I listen to a lot of music also. I don't want, I read, I read a few um, audiobooks, not a whole lot. I love like James Bond type stuff and espionage type stuff. Yeah, I love listening to music too. Especially 60s Soul is my favorite. So I have playlists for Otis Redding and Jackie Wilson and um, Aretha Franklin, stuff like that. That's my favorite. And then I like Bossa Nova Jazz from Brazil. I love that too. And then sometimes just any era that I've lived through, like 80s pop or 90s rap or even modern rap I like too. I haven't heard of Beth Hart either. All right, thanks for all the suggestions, everybody. I will see if I can check any of them out. Yeah, 60s and 70s. Uh, there, I don't know if there's a music genre that I don't like, though. I like lots of music. I like most music. I, I think there's something good in every. Mmm. Dublin Murders on Stars. That sounds like something that I would enjoy. Shark Week is starting this week, too. Okay, awesome. All right, well, I've got lots of samples for new patterns to make right now, and I'm not going to tell you why. I'll tell you why sooner uh, sooner than later, though. So I do need some time to do that, uh, and sitting on the couch is perfect for that. Um, also, I have, I'm have i going to be making more videos this week. I've got several patterns to make videos for, several new patterns to release. By the way, I did mention yesterday that I was going to release the pattern for the bobble knit uh, dishcloth, washcloth, and this pattern is released. Now you can find this on my website. I will make a tutorial video for it as well, but the pattern comes with written instructions with detailed stitch counts and a full detailed chart for the entire project in the pattern. So very easy to follow between the chart and the written instructions. And you can find that on my website now. It is a two ball project in Be So Scrubby Yarn. Look at how pretty that is. That is the prettiest scrubby yarn I have ever seen. Isn't that cute? So it's worked on the di diagonal. You cast on five stitches, increase up to your widest point, and then de decrease back down to five stitches, all while maintaining that bobble stitch pattern. And uh, very easy to modify. And then let's say you wanted to make something else with this. Uh, you could use Be So Easy yarn and make a fun rug for at the foot of a bed or something. Or you could make a, uh, a scarf or any type of project you could make. And so you could increase, you could make an afghan out of this if you wanted in a different yarn. So once you understand the easy to memorize stitch pattern, you could increase out as wide as you want and then decrease back down to wherever you started from. Or if you, let's say you wanted to make a shawl out of this in a different yarn, you could increase up to the widest point and then cast and then bind off. And then you would have, let me fold it in half so you can see what you'd have. You'd have a shawl. You could do that in Be So Easy yarn or Be So uh, Baby yarn or Be So Sporty yarn or any other yarn to make a triangular shawl. So once you have, or you could even decide to cast on for the widest point since you'll know the stitch count from the pattern and the um, chart and you could just decrease down to make a triangle so you aren't limited to just the pattern as it is you could take any piece of this pattern and separate it out to make something else like a triangular shawl in a different yarn i wouldn't necessarily use scrubby for making shawls but it's absolutely fabulous for making home deck stuff like this but the pattern you could use for other things as well Okay, does anybody have any questions about that? You can find that on my website. You can also find Be So Scrubby Yarn on my website. It's $2.99 a ball. You'll need two balls to make this and a size 4.5 millimeter knitting needles. Um, so two balls, right? Yeah. Ooh, something dropped on my shoulder. Does anybody have any other questions? 
I do want to remind you that there is still time to enter to win a copy of my newest book, 24 Crochet Hats. If you pop over to last week's episodes, this is 77, 76, 75, was it 70? Uh, I don't know what episode it was. What episode is the giveaway last week? Does anybody remember? I thought it was 73, but 34. That doesn't add up of today's Tuesday. 75. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> okay, so if you go over to episode 875, and Judy's posted a link just now, if you haven't left a comment to, um, if you haven't left a comment to enter to win a copy of this book, head over there and leave a comment. I will be randomly choosing a winner from one of the comments this coming Thursday on Giveaway Thursday. Uh, it's one comment per person, please. And all it takes is one comment to be entered to win. The contest is available to anybody all over the world, not just in the U.S. And the book will come personalized and autographed by me. It is a fabulous book. If you don't win, I still highly recommend you check out this book. It's an amazing reference tool for anybody that likes to make hats. 24 different types of construction styles and techniques, all with charts and written instructions. But the most awesome part is that it's size inclusive. You get sizes from baby through men, baby, child, women, and men sizes for the hats so that you can make any of these designs for anybody. Um, really great reference tool. And like I've said before, once you have all that information on stitch patterns and construction styles, you can pick them apart and make other things too. Uh, skip the crown and just work the stitch patterns in the round on any of these to make um, to make cowls. Pay attention to the stitch multiples so that you can make things larger or smaller to make other things as well. There's a lot that you can do with a book like this. And like I said, it's written instructions for all the sizes as well as charts. Uh, just so much information and so many different construction styles too. There's Tunisian and seamless and broomstick and uh, what else do I have in there? Lots of stuff, lots of different techniques. Let's see, where are the photos? Yeah, there's Tunisian and tapestry crochet and lace, all kinds of different lace, color work, uh, seamless motifs, regular motifs, broomstick lace, post stitches, what else? Messy bun hats. Like just so many different types of construction styles. So lots to enjoy in there. Great reference book. So if you want to enter to win a, a copy of it, leave a comment on episode 875. And if you want to order a copy of the book, you can order on Amazon all over the world. You can also order on my website for a personalized autograph copy of the paperback book, or you can save yourself a few dollars. And, and if you like digital, you can also order the ebook on my website as well. And one of the benefits of ordering any digital patterns or ebooks on my website is that my new website, although it's not so new anymore, we've had it since February, I guess. Um, there is a, once you have an account on my website, when you place an order, you have all of your information saved for you in your account. So I highly recommend setting up an account when you order because when you order digital products, then you have your own digital library, which will hold all of your digital products there, your eBooks and your patterns. And so you have access to them 24 seven. So whether you've changed your phone, changed your devices, don't remember where you're, uh, where you downloaded to, you can download and uh, you can download again over and over again on your devices. And let's say you want to print it out and you don't have a printer at home, you can log into your account anywhere <coughs> where you have access to a printer and print there. So let's say you want to go to your friend's house to print out, or let's say you want to go to the library to print out. You can log into your account, go to your download library section and print out there as well. These are requests that I have been hearing for many, many years, and I'm so happy to finally have this opportunity to have this feature on my website to, to make people that much more happy, right? Is it humid here? Yes, of course it's humid here. It's Florida, it's South Florida in the summer. It is very humid here. I wouldn't say this is the most humid day ever, but it is definitely humid, definitely. 
Does anybody have any questions about the download library or any of the patterns that I've mentioned or the giveaway or anything else? Yep, August is, I think August and September are, are our hottest months in South Florida. I love it. Oh, yes, and I know we've said this many times before, but it seems like there's always somebody that hasn't heard it. If you have a Yahoo email, um, for some reason Yahoo blocks uh, our emails from customer service, Judy and me. And so if you have a Yahoo email address, your name at yahoo.com and you think you're not getting replied to, it is because it is going in your junk folder. Anybody else here will definitely, uh, uh, definitely testify that customer service is very prompt service with uh, my website and my brand. And if you have asked Judy or me questions, you get really quick replies. So if you think you're not getting a reply and you have a Yahoo email address, the reason being is that uh, Yahoo is blocking our emails from you. So you will have to check your junk folder and or contact Yahoo if it's not in your junk folder. Yep, AOL has issues too. I have set up a, a blog post a while back that explained how you, um, how you solve this problem, whether you're on AOL or Yahoo or any other uh, email or free email uh, provider, and you can find that blog post on my website. And it will, yep, you could, if you're having issues with Gmail, I tell you how to put email addresses on your saved list there too. So the key is figuring out how to get someone's email on your saved list. And if you go to that blog post that I wrote about it, I gave you I give you step by step instructions for each email provider to help you um, solve the problem because it really is on the user end that it has to be fixed. If we could fix it here, we would. kids in the camp are out in the water so cute check this out how cute do they all look out there can you see them look at how far out they there we go Judy just shared a link to the uh, blog post that I wrote helping you to figure out email um, issues so if you need help uh, get if you need help with your email um, you can read that and there is also a phone number so if you're having issues Beyond that, uh, you can contact us with the phone number on my website. <clears throat> we do our best. We're trying. Can't con I mean, there's only so much we can do with uh, outside issues. Can't control Yahoo, but we can certainly try to circumvent as much as possible and try to educate everybody as much as possible. Hi, Jamie. Good morning. Does anybody have any other questions? Great questions, everybody. I love getting questions. It's so great. Sometimes I don't think of what people have questions about. Oh, there's a fax. Uh, the frequently asked questions is also a great spot on my website. Thanks for check. Thanks for sharing that, Judy. So if you want to read frequently asked questions, because we're more alike than we are different. So if you have questions, chances are they've been asked before, and you can find answers to them there. So I highly recommend checking out the fax page. Fax stands for frequently asked questions, and Judy just posted uh, a link there. I did not send out an email yesterday, Thea. I meant to and did not. I will be sending out an email today. So if you're on my mailing list, that will happen today. I will be sharing links for all of the new patterns and new videos that have come out since the last email, including the new bobble knit dishcloth in scrubby and the new uh, moringa pattern and videos and whatever else is new since the last email I sent out. All right. Well, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the beach, the sound of the waves, this driftwood behind me, chatting with me and everyone else. Thanks everybody for all of your input. It always makes the show more special. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow for the next episode of Create, Share, Inspire podcast. Bye-bye.